most of the longitudinal standing waves that we'll be dealing with happen inside an organ pipe um, like this. Now organ pipes come in two flavors, open and closed. And by open, we mean open at both ends. This end is obviously open. It's got a great big uh, hole in it. But the other open end is right here. Now, this open end is, is shaped such that when you blow, you create turbulence or white noise. That frequency, which resonates with this length of tube, is going to be the one that, that is amplified, and we hear it. OK? Now, because the ends are open, they have to be anti-nodes. Now, people, I can't go straight from an anti-node to an anti-node without having a node in between. If I just went from an anti-node to an anti-node, that's wind going right through the, the pipe. <laughs> the node is needed for the, the sloshing, the whoosh, the whoosh, the whoosh. And that sloshing is what you hear as sound, okay? Now, how many footballs? One football. And it takes two footballs to make a wavelength, so the wavelength is twice the length of that pipe. Look familiar? Okay? Uh, the frequency is one charge, V over two L. Okay? That, that formula is only good for the fundamental frequency when the ends are the same. Don't be using that formula for everything, okay? Now, if we close a pipe, what we mean by that is we close it at one end. If you close it at both ends, that's a box and you can't get sound out. Okay, you just close it at one end. That forces that closed end to be a node. The open end is still an anti-node. Now I can only fit, at the fundamental, I can only fit a half football in the, in the pipe. That means I've only got a quarter of a wavelength. That means the wavelength is four times the length of that, that pipe. Okay? It's still the fundamental. Now, folks, when you're building a pipe organ, your low notes are made by the long pipes. And at some point, you, you just can't get longer pipes because they run into your ceiling, unless you've got a a very high ceiling. So one of the things you can do is make all your low notes closed pipes. Because in a closed pipe, you don't have to fit half the, free, half the wavelength in there. You only have to fit a quarter of the wavelength in there. So you can get the same note with half the length of your pipe. Now, what's going to happen to that frequency when I put my hand over the end of the of the pipe. Talk to your neighbor, what's going to happen? With this one. <laughs> Is anyone else worried about how many old stinky professors have had their lips on that? Nope. I'm probably going to come down with Ebola tomorrow. Okay. So, I hope you predicted that when I put my hand on the end, the wavelength would double, the frequency would cut in half, would get lower. So, let's try it. You did it! <laughs> Physics is good. Now, let's look at the next highest frequency that will resonate. If the pipe is open at both ends, I have to go to the next frequency by adding a whole football. In this case, I went from one football to two footballs. I doubled the number of footballs. That means my footballs have to be half as big to fit. That means my wavelength just got half as big. That means my frequency just did what? Double, okay? So now I'm looking at the second harmonic. If on the other hand, I have a closed pipe, by that I mean closed at one end, I still have to add one football. But I started with half a football, 
And so now I tripled the number of footballs. I went from a half to three halves. If I triple the number of footballs that fit in the same space, my foot, footballs have to get smaller by a factor of three. That means the frequency is bigger by a factor of three. I've gone to the third harmonic. Okay? The third harmonic. So once again, even with organ pipes, when the ends are the same, open to open, I get all the harmonics, F1, F2, F3, F4, F5. When one, is one end is closed and one end is open, I only get the odd harmonics. The odd harmonics. Okay? So this is the summary. Ends are the same, all of them. Ends different, odd. 